بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the first shorts where we are looking into the biographies of some of the early Muslims about whom we don't have much information, but we have many life lessons to learn. And today we're covering someone who there is quite a bit about him and his background that we can benefit from. And inshallah ta'ala will bring a few things together. His name is Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, to give a little bit of background, Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu anhu, he falls into the category of the last two companions that we covered, right? So he's very similar as a commander of an army to Utbah ibn Ghazwan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and also Shurahbir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, um, he's also related to the Prophet sallallahu in several ways. So we look at him and he is an early convert and someone who we know converted at the hands of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which of course is to the credit of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu to have yet another noble companion that we will study bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, who embraced Islam at his hands. Hence, all of the credit of his work, of his contribution is also part of that of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the son of a man by the name of Jahsh ibn Riyab al-Asadi, and he is uh, a Halif, one who gave his allegiance to Bani Abdi Shams. And his mother is Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib. We've mentioned her already um, a couple of times. She is the maternal aunt of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib. And all of her children would become Muslim. Okay, all of her children would become Muslim. Most of the biographers say that she passed away before that happened. So we look at her children. Uh, we spoke about Hamna bint Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the widow of Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. So that last long episode that we covered Mus'ab, we spoke about the weeping and the wailing of Hamna radiallahu ta'ala anha and how she was a cousin of the Prophet sallallahu We know about Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha because eventually, of course, she will become a wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you have the brother here of Zainab and Hamna. Uh, also, his uh, his brother Ubaidullah ibn Jahsh, who we have already spoken about as being the uh, husband of Um Habiba radiAllahu taala anha, and who you know some of the sources suggest he may have uh, died after leaving Islam in Abyssinia. But of course, as we spoke about in the in the seerah of Um Habiba radiAllahu anha, we can't fully establish that. However, Ubaidullah ibn Jahsh was one of those people who embraced monotheism before the Prophet ﷺ started to preach Islam. So he was unique in that sense, and maybe that gives you some background into the way that the ideas of Islam are already penetrating uh, the household of Abdullah bin Jahsh anhu. And there's one more brother who we will speak about next time, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, who is uh, really, you know, subhanAllah, a person who has a remarkable story, and his name is Abd ibn Jahsh also known as Abu Ahmad, Abd ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So we'll speak about him next time inshaAllah ta'ala. But right now, let's focus on Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is a man who, as he embraced Islam very early on, alongside Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and joined Dar al-Arqam, uh, made the second migration to Abyssinia. So he's part of the group that made the second hijrah to Abyssinia. And he is also one of those that migrated to Medina. Uh, afterwards. So he is one of those people who is uh, distinguished by being from the people of the two Hijras. Uh, one of the things that we have about him and one of the famous incidents that we have about him is that he is known as the first person uh, to be known as Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the believers or an Amir in Islam. Now, of course, we know that Amir al-Mu'mineen as a title and as an office belongs to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But where does this narration come from? When Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dispatched him in a very particular raid. And when he dispatched him in that raid, 
The man who narrates this famous incident is none other than Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If you notice, is always around other people that were commanders, that were warriors in that time. So Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Ba'athana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent us in one of these uh, sariyas, in one of these raids, وَقَالَ لَأَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ رَجُلًا أَصْبَرَكُمْ عَلَى الْجُوعِ وَالْعَطْشِ That I'm going to send a person to be in charge of you that is the most patient with hunger and thirst. Meaning someone who is very patient, who is of course very capable, and someone who can lead you. فَبَعَثَ عَلَيْنَا Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the Prophet sallallahu appointed Abdullah ibn Jahsh to be our commander, our leader. فَكَانَ أَوَّلُ أَمِيرٌ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ And so he was the first Amir in Islam. So this is the words, or these are the words of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that Abdullah ibn Jahsh is the first Amir, the first commander in Islam as a result of this raid. However, this raid against Quraysh uh, actually went wrong. It is a very famous raid known as the Nakhla uh, raid. Essentially what you find is that the Prophet Sallallahu used to dispatch before the Battle of Badr, these raids to disrupt the caravans of the people of Mecca that were going to primarily Asham, that were going to primarily greater Syria, and they were taking the stolen goods of the Muslims from Mecca and they were trading them in Asham. So this was one of the strategies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi dispatches him and a small group of people uh, in this raid, which is known as the Nakhla raid. And he gives him a letter uh, with instructions and he tells him to wait to read that letter. <clears throat> so Abdullah goes to that area of Al-Nakhla, which is between Mecca and Al-Ta'if. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, tells him to observe what Quraysh is doing and to try to disrupt, but at the same time, not to attack them, not to actually fight with them, because this was in the month of Rajab and Rajab is a sacred month. And because Rajab is a sacred month, this was not a time of fighting. And even though the Meccans did not honor anything, the Prophet ﷺ still honored what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored. So Abdullah ibn Jahsh uh, is there in a Nakhla and they are observing the caravan. And what ends up happening is that, you know, fighting breaks out anyway, and they end up attacking those merchants, even though it was the month of Rajab. So when they come back to the Prophet Wasallam, they don't just have the merchandise, but they have also, you know, one person who was killed on the other side and two that were captured. And Rasulullah initially, he disproved that or, or disapproved of what Abdullah had done. And he said, Wallahi ma amartukum biqital. He said, I swear by Allah, I did not command you to actually fight them, but instead to get their news and to disrupt their caravans. This was not a time that you were supposed to actually attack them. So if you are Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you're thinking to yourself that you're done, right? You know, you earned the anger or the disapproval of the Prophet sallallahu in, uh, alayhi in this regard. And the people in Mecca are mocking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because they're saying that, look, you know, he violated one of the sacred months and he ordered his people to attack ours. And this is not something that we do. Now realize Ahl Mecca, the people of Mecca, they would play with the actual calendar, right? They'd switch sacred months around so that they could justify fighting at certain times. They were not a people who honored much and they had already violated many rules at the time. But the fact that they were trying to use this to try to undermine the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims and to suggest that there was something unethical about them uh, was very low of them. So anyway, Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, you know, was very saddened obviously over what had happened and was waiting for something from the Prophet Sallallahu that would be in his favor. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed Quran in his favor in that regard. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِي They ask you, O Rasulullah, about uh, the, the sacred months and fighting within the sacred months. قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ That you should say that fighting within the sacred months is a great transgression. But at the same time, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go on to say? وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَأَخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ But at the same time, a greater transgression with Allah is when you prevent people from following the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you force them to disbelieve in Him and you prevent access to the sacred masjid and you drive out the inhabitants of the sacred masjid. وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ 
and verily fitna is worse. Akbaru min al-qatil is worse than uh, qatil is worse than killing uh, in this regard. So subhanAllah, what this verse did is it actually absolved Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu and those Muslims to say that uh, you people in Mecca do not have the right to claim any type of moral victory here, right? What happened here is natural. They had a right and the burden is not upon them. The burden is upon you. Those of you that drove people out of Mecca, drove people out of Al-Ard Al-Haram, out of the sacred land. And now you're trying to use the sacred months as an excuse so that you could continue to trade stolen goods, to take the stolen goods from people that you persecuted and drove out of their homes and sell it elsewhere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by revealing this ayah actually absolves Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu because the greater burden is not on him and not on the Muslims. Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu continues, he fights in the battle of Badr and he fights very bravely. So he attains the rank of being one of the veterans of Badr. And then comes the moment of Abdullah bin Jahsh, which is the day of Uhud. And SubhanAllah, you know, <clears throat> even having myself the, the, uh, the blessing of having visited Uhud many times, um, I never had come across this narration before of Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, in the battle of Uhud, but it's a very, uh, a very beautiful and um, you know a, a very moving narration, and it's also from Sa'id ibn Abi Waqas radiAllahu ta'ala anhu. Sa'id ibn Abi Waqas radiAllahu ta'ala anhu says, before the battle of Uhud started, and may Allah be pleased with Sa'id. I mean, Subhanallah, he's involved in all of these stories. He says, before the battle of Uhud started, Abdullah ibn Jahsh said to me, "Ala tad'ullah, will you not make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa taala?" So I raised my hands. And so you have this incident where you have Sa'ad radiallahu anhu raising his hands and you have uh, next to him Abdullah ibn Jahsh. So, you know, put yourself in, in, in the room, if you will, with Sa'ad radiallahu anhu raising his hand and Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu raising his hands with him so that he could make dua. He said, فَدِعَوْتُ So I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah would send me a strong opponent that I would kill and I would be killed by or I would be killed by. And that through that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant me martyrdom. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased with me. I mean, so he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, you know, the, the opportunity to fight bravely and to attain martyrdom at the same time. So he said at the end of that, when I made that dua, Abdullah said, Ameen to my dua. And then he continued and he made dua for something similar, but he added that my body would be left in such a way that إِذَا لَقِيْتُكَ غَدًا He's talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Jahsh is talking to Allah and Sa'ad is listening to his dua and they're both still raising their hands. So he said, إِذَا لَقِيْتُكَ غَدًا That if I find you uh, tomorrow, O oh Allah, when I meet you, O oh Allah, you would ask me in what cause were you mutilated? And I would say, أَقُولُ فِيكَ وَفِي رَسُولِكَ يَا رَبْ I would say to you, O oh Allah, that I was mutilated. Uh, I was killed and mutilated in such a way for your sake and for your messenger, O Allah. فَتَقُولُ لِي And you would say to me, O Allah, صدقت. You are truthful. So subhanAllah, he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O Allah, uh, let me also be granted shahada and be left in such a way that when I'm raised in front of you on the day of judgment, you say to me, for what cause did this happen to you? And I would say for you, O Allah, for your messenger, O Allah, and you would say to me, Sadaq, you've told the truth. Think about the sincerity that it takes for you to make a dua like that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much confidence he had in his dua. And we know the position of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu, his dua, if you go back and you uh, watch the lesson on Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, so he is a man of dua. Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, لَقَدْ كَانَ دَعْوَةُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ نِجَحْشٍ خَيْرًا مِنْ دَعْوَتِي He said, clearly the dua of Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu I'm sorry, he said, clearly the dua of Abdullah was better than my dua. Clearly the dua of Abdullah bin Jahsh was better than my dua. Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu fought bravely in Uhud until he was uh, killed by Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq. Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq is the one who the scholars say, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ was revealed about. So he's a condemned man. Uh, a hated opponent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Al-Akhnas bin Shuraiq did to Abdullah bin Jahsh similar to what was done with Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 
He, uh, he cut off his nose and his ears. He mutilated him to make an example out of him. And when the Prophet wasallam found him in the battlefield, the Prophet وسلم, was deeply moved, was very emotional. And Rasulullah wasallam ordered that he be buried in the same grave as Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, and also the uncle of Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu because again, his aunt was the sister of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the Prophet وسلم, ordered that they be buried in one grave. So when you go to Uhud and you visit Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, know that buried with him in that same grave because his grave is separate from the rest is actually Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the very same grave. He was killed in a similar way and he uh, had that sincere duha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his sacrifices. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him that martyrdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to visit him and to visit the martyrs of Uhud and to be joined with them and with our beloved Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah al Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Inshallah ta'ala next time we'll talk about the brother of Abdullah bin Jahsh and then we will talk about his widow who would go on to become one of our mothers, Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anha. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.